joining us for today's webinar. We have a wonderful team here with us right now. But before I introduce them, I have to show you what they sent me yesterday because it is so sweet. They sent me for to be Valentine's dates. <laughs> so it's beautiful. But I have the team here with me from Brownell. And if you're not familiar with Brownell, um, you're going to be familiar with them by the end of this session. So let me go ahead and introduce their team. There's a variety of people here to talk about the different areas that they work in. So we'll just have people go ahead and wave when I introduce them. So first of all, we have Carrie, who is the Chief Development Officer. Hello, Carrie. And we have AC Carlton. It's actually Ann Carlton, but she goes by AC, who is the hosting program manager. And then we have Gabby with the marketing team. And Tony, the director of hosting development. Catherine is the director of partner relations. And then Margaret oversees training for the different mentees. So thank you everyone for joining us. We are gonna, um, if you've got questions, pop them into the comments and we will get to them when they can. Or if you uh, you know, wanna wish us happy Valentine's Day, anything like that, pop that into the comments. So let's get started because I, I have a couple of questions for you guys. So first of all, can you just give us a big picture overview about Brownell? Sure, I'd love to. Um, so Brownell is the oldest standing travel agency in the United States, which is so crazy. I know. Last year we celebrated our 135th anniversary, so we were really, we came to life in 1887. So you think about that, and I always struggle with how that sounds. We're the oldest agency, and you think, well, you know, is that cumbersome? Is that old? And, and really what that means is a lot of firsts for us within the travel industry. Innovation, we have our, our list of values and innovation is, is top among them. And so when you think about how does a company stay relevant and stay successful and continue to support successful people for 135 years, those firsts are very, very important. So the first agency and longest standing in the United States. A very cool thing is that our company was founded by a man named George Brownell and quickly after him, his daughter, Jenny, took over running the company. So she was a female leader of a company in the early 19th century. Wow. And something I think that would resonate with all of us is that she actually had a group in Berlin when the Spanish flu broke out in 1908. So it is a global pandemic. She has travelers, needs to get them home. Don't know if that sounds familiar to anybody recently, but that first started with us over a hundred years ago. Um, we were also the first host agency within Virtuoso. So it was API at the time and Rebecca Wilson had an agency that Brownell ended up acquiring. So another female run entrepreneurial company that joined API Virtuoso as a host agency. And then Rebecca Wilson is also the one who created for us our mentoring program, which was the first mentoring program in the business. And that started in 2006. So bringing us where we are today, we are are based in Birmingham, Alabama with 110 advisors throughout the United States. And we actually have a couple that are living expat lives in Europe, which is pretty exciting. And um, those 110 advisors produce $200 million in sales. And so when you do the math on that, that is where the four times the industry average comes along because they average over $200,000 in revenue each. And we have a staff of 40 that support those 110. And so the reason why we have so many beautiful faces on this call today is because we wanted to have representation and faces with those different departments that, su that support the advisors and being the most successful that they can. And so that's why we've got a full group today. That's amazing. I, I remember from host week hearing about, I was looking up the um, founding dates and seeing that about Brownell and being like, that is so neat. <laughs> Yeah, it's really cool. It's really cool. Actually, if we have one second, AC was going to maybe yeah. have a brochure with her, like from some of the first. Yes. Are those so cute? Yes. I don't know if you can see them. Oh, it's like blurriness. I can sure. kind of. They are. But I mean, they look like something kitschy that we would have created, but those are the actual brochures from some of the touring that we did. I anyway, love how old so are much. those? So old school. Yeah, how old are those? Still marketing. Marketing then, okay. still marketing now. That's true. <laughs> These are from 1957, 1959, 1960. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, amazing. That's also really neat that you guys have so much of your history um, 
recorded in there and and know it within the industry or within the company. Absolutely. So, well, let's see. We kind of talked about the title of our call being why Brownell advisors make four times the industry average. Um, but I guess the question would be what you have 40 staff, you have a great ratio of staff to advisors out there, but what, yeah. what other secrets are you doing that uh, bring it up to four times the industry average? Well, I think the best part of the secret sauce is that it's actually not a secret at all. It's something that we're really proud of and we love to talk about anytime somebody wants to ask us. So thanks for asking, Steph. <laughs> um, really, it, it comes down to meeting advisors where they are. So, you know, we've got our mentoring program and those are the newbies. Those are the people who have traveled and love travel, but may not know how to sell travel, don't know how to run a business necessarily and want that help. We have existing advisors that are at other agencies that are looking to get to that next level of business. We often find that that million dollar mark, that $100,000 revenue is a really hard threshold to get to. And so they're looking for someone to get them there. And we focus a lot on that. And then that third category is someone who's been doing it a while, that tenured successful travel advisor. And how are you keeping them relevant? How are you keeping them innovating? How are you keeping them growing their business, knowing that growing can mean different things for different people? Some people mm -hmm. it's revenue, some people it's margin, some people it's diversification and, and the evolution of their clients and how they're moving out of family travel and going into couples travel or whatever they may look like. And so it's understanding who our advisors are and their needs and creating that system to meet them where they are. So um, if I can, in talking about, and, and I think that I would love to then defer to all the different women on the call as far as what does that look like? So the first place that I wanna start um, is with business development and going back to the idea of firsts. So um, I joined Brownell in 2017, so five years ago, with this position that was newly created then, which is business development. And no one else was thinking about how are we coaching our existing advisors? How are we helping them get to the next level? And Brownell did it. And so now that's Tony McClellan's role. And so I'm going to turn it over to Tony to talk a little bit more about what she does. Thank you. Um, and I would love to give you like the so what and what it actually means to be um, it means for our advisors. So 80% of our advisors brought in 100,000 plus in revenue, which equates to a million in sales. And this doesn't happen like for anyone who's alone on an island. It, it really takes support. And so for my part as a business coach, my background really allows um, me to, to understand and um to really help um, with the challenges that our advisors face, but also like the great opportunities. I spent eight years at a startup helping them become leaders in their field, but most of my career was spent as an executive um, in a huge corporation, Procter & Gamble, and until, until 2019, when I went through the Brownell Mentoring Program, and because of that, I really was able to create a successful travel business Personally, one of the mo my most favorite things that I do is the annual business reviews because every review is absolutely so different. It's customized to really whatever the advisor's specific needs are. And so when Carrie said, we meet you where you are, um, we mean it. Uh, I had an advisor um, recently who um, didn't want to grow. She actually didn't want to grow her sales but needed to increase her margins so that she could work the less hours. And so the first thing we did was walk through her client list to see um, where she could lean in and maybe consider some clients that weren't the right fit for her. Often we talk about how to hire or even when to hire staff um, or how to improve processes. Um, I think the point is um, that you can't grow your, your business without support. And this is a great way to have a one-on-one -on -one meeting and have like that individual support. We also offer diverse trainings on everything from financial acumen and travel joy, which is one of my favorite topics. Um, and just last week we had a, a cruise training and it wasn't on product knowledge, but really on how to have that conversation with your client about cruising. And so I think what's important is that we understand like where that need is. And so we can often address it just through trainings. Um, we are laser focused on infrastructure and that includes tools such as Travel Joy, as I mentioned, 
or access um, QuickBooks, social media schedules, because honestly, we believe you cannot have a sustainable, have sustainable business growth without those right tools. But really, the thing that makes us so special is that everyone relies on our incredible brain trust of our community. Um, we have an internal communication platform. It's called Slack. And that's where advisors can post questions, share answers, um, and all day. And, I cannot keep up with it some days, it's so active. Um, but we have advisors who have been selling um, travel for 30 years and they're so selfless with their um, sharing their knowledge, but we have less expense, uh, experienced advisors who really understand the latest and greatest technology and are happy um, to disseminate that information. Um, we also have mastermind groups and those are groups of five or six advisors who meet monthly um, really to problem solve and like, develop actual go forward plans um, to help um, with their success of their business. Really a mastermind group is um, sort of a combination of um, brainstorming, uh, peer accountability, which I love and support. But I think if you asked our advisors what their favorite part of mastermind groups are, I, I, I really do believe that it's that relationship building of that five or six group, um, group um, of where five or six of them are together and they actually meet monthly for a good solid you know five or six months and so they get to know each other and um we have those couple times a year so those are some really i think some important uh building blocks and foundation of our development team and what we did and i think you know if i can jump in um yes thank you jessica white for your uh your testimonial we're so grateful for you um so, you know, you talk about all this business development and and sometimes for a lot of people that's that can be a runaway train. We've been so fortunate with the rebound in travel and what's been what's been happening and, and everything that's been coming in and the interest for travel. And so how do you how do you help someone beyond that? What do you do when that train starts to run away? And I think that this also goes back to that idea of a first. For us being a host agency from the very, very beginning, host agency just it wasn't just that you're affiliated with an IATA number. You're connected to this number and now you get travel deals and you can be connected. For us, it was this idea of creating a community because you are an independent advisor. You are working from home. You were working before home and for the rest of the world was working from home. And so how are we going to create that community for you? Also, as a sole entrepreneur, how are we creating an infrastructure for you to give you that assistance on the back end, whether it's with processes or questions you may have about operations that aren't intuitive? And that's where the idea of our hosting team came into play. And AC, I'd love for you to just tell a little bit more about the about the hosting services, and what that means and what we offer. Yes, happy to talk about it. So our services have really evolved over the past several years. Um, and I like to think of our support teams, we think of ourselves as the heart of the house, like at a hotel. We're the people in the background that are doing everything so that our advisors can be out on the front lines, creating beautiful trips, um, selling, engaging with their clients, and we handle all the back end stuff. So we have four teams. Um, of, like Carrie said, we have 40 employees. So 15 of us are support focused. And um, we have a wonderful air desk made up of six talented air specialists. We have our insurance desk, which has a licensed insurance sales specialist, um, as well as a wonderful coordinator there to assist her. And then kind of the bulk of our support comes from our hosting support and support. So our hosting support is a team of four ladies and we take all the admin tasks off the plate of our advisors. That's our goal. So um, those time consuming tasks, building profiles, entering client data, the things that advisors don't really want to get bogged down in, we take that off their plate. And, um, our sales support, we actually launched last year and it took off in an amazing way. I think there's like 80% of our community is using them now and it, they haven't even been um, up and running a year, which is awesome. But they are a full sales coordinator role. So quotes for hotels, or trains, um, and they'll do an, another time consuming task, staying on the phone, compiling a bunch of different quotes. They'll make it all beautiful for the advisor to present to the client to review and make a decision. So again, our goal in the heart of the house is really just to take those, 
those tasks that bog your plate so that we can we can do that and you can focus on selling. And how that so, uh, go ahead, sorry, Gary. No, no, I was just gonna say a funny thing that you'll hear us talk about a lot is we're big believers in having staff, you know, and, and knowing when to get to that threshold and when you need staff, but not everybody um wants that responsibility. So AC, I, I wondered if you would share a couple of examples. Yes, I'm happy to. So we have one advisor who is a top producer. She actually has a five million dollar book of business and she has no staff. She has not hired one person. She's a one woman shop and she relies heavily on our teams and um, she's incredible. So we love being able to support her in her five million dollar business. We also have another advisor at that threshold who does have a team of six different coordinators that work for her and her business. They focus on sales, they focus on client relationships, and we handle the nitty gritty things that they just don't want to spend time on, like um, finalizing final documents, itineraries, insurance policies, that kind of thing. And then another example to us in 2021, um, she came as a part-time coordinator. She was new to Brownell. She relied heavily on all of our teams and she reached our top sales level this past year. And we were so proud of her because she was just eager to jump in and grow her business and she did it. So it was exciting for us to watch. So exciting. Are we killing you, Steph? You are amazing me. I'm having a great time. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, you let us know because, you know, obviously we're very proud people. So, um, cause I, I'd love, can we talk about marketing for a minute? Okay. I, I want to hear so, about it. I'm just, I was going to pop off, but I'm like, I'm just enjoying this so much. <laughs> okay, good. Well, you tell us, you tell us when to zip it. Um, but so I think, I think a collective theme besides, in addition to first is pain points. And you, Steph, know this. I mean, you, this is, this is what you do. You're in it. Your team is also working and how do we address pain points and, there are so many similar pain points with travel advisors and i would say one of the number one pain points is marketing um and just thinking about a little bit of a first is that we were doing white labeled marketing on behalf of our advisors we've been doing it for 15 years so it was that idea that all of our advisors have their own brand they have their own names how could we create the content for them to send out but it's going to come from their email addresses and it's going to come with their name on it which seems totally crazy today of course that's what happens but Back then, it wasn't necessarily. And so um, for Gabby, you know, she was probably in kindergarten when that was happening, and which is why we have her, because she is young and smart and innovative. And so I'd love to turn it over to you, Gabby, to let us know how that whole idea of individual emails has evolved into something a lot more dynamic. Yeah, Carrie, thank you so much. And I completely agree. Sometimes marketing is a big pain point for advisors, but a lot of the times, or I guess the one big takeaway is that everyone has to market their business, no matter um, who you are, what your brand is, you, you have to find your niche voice. Um, and I think that's something that our team does really well in helping advisors. Um, um, we do this through not only email and social media, but also by knowing their business really well. We not only sit down and learn about the person that the advisor is, but their business and how they want to run it. And we sit down and we strategically think about a path that could set them up for success um, in the future. And I think we do this in two really great ways. The first way, like you were saying, is email. Um, let's say an advisor is looking to sell a new product like cruising or um, wants to stay top of mind to a client after taking a brief hiatus, or let's say they're not as in touch. Email is a great way and a great direct source of communication with your clients. Um, so what we do is we help with branded templates, um, custom templates for email. Um, we help with content. We help with writing. If you're ever stuck or have writer's block or you're not as creative as you think you are, or we're always there to help and create that content. Um, so we also do deploying on advisors' behalf. So that allows them to kind of give their email over to us and we take it from there. Um, so once these once the emails have deployed, we give them reporting and metrics and also give them the opportunity to look into this reporting themselves and we walk them through it. And that, again, sets them up for success in the future with their next campaign. Um, currently, our advisors have an 
average open rate of above 60%, and that's high above the industry average. Um, so that's really impressive and something we're really proud of. Um, the second point that I wanted to um, talk about that I think our team helps with really well is social media. Um, every month we provide a content calendar of content for advisors to use. And I think a really great example of this is one advisor who was looking to, or not looking to, he was going to Thailand. Um, and this was recently. And he was there for a couple of weeks and was interested in posting from the trip. Now, as you know, any experienced advisor is very focused on the destination and wants to learn about all the experiences available for their clients, wants to kind of vet any great processes while there or do something really adventurous. And not everyone has time to post while they're on a trip. Um, so he en enlisted in our services. And what we were able to do was after he sent us photos and videos of the trip in real time, we then by the next day, we're able to create custom posts, including captions and hashtags, and then not only give it back to him for approval, but deploy it for him. Um, and he was thrilled with this. Um, I think a lot of our advisors have been thrilled with this. Um, it really gives you an opportunity to stay top of mind with your clients and bring that on that, on that adventure with you um, and really shows you how credible you are in the industry and keeps your audience engaged. Um, so I think that's two things we do really well, but overall, I think our team really sticks with each advisor, understands them personally, understands their business, and we see ourselves as an extension of their team, and that's something we're really proud of. That's great. Thank you, Gabby. You sort of have a little delay in your speaking, but... Yes, and that's a team of three in marketing stuff. So, you know, as you're, if anybody's keeping track and tick marking the 40, we're going to get there. Um, so, well, oh, wait, can I just say something really quick? Yes. Because I have to say, like, for people that are watching that aren't familiar with some of these numbers, some of them are very impressive, like the 60% open rate. I think the industry average is something like 25 to 30 or maybe even lower than that. Yeah. And, um, like, the other one is the sales per advisors is, is quite a bit higher. Like, well, like the title of the webinar says, four times higher than the industry average, but those are very impressive numbers. So congrats. We use the HAR stats as the industry average. So thank you, Stephanie. <laughs> Love the surveys. Love pushing that stuff out. <laughs> well, um, I think an another thing that is important is uh, the tenure of uh, the people who work with us too is, is really important, not just from the advisors, but from the inside support team. And Catherine Norton just celebrated her 10 year anniversary with Brownell. She too looks like she was probably in kindergarten 10 years ago. Um, but Kat, when, when I first met Brownell, I was actually a global sales manager um, for a luxury hotel company and Brownell was my client. And the first time that I walked in, it was meeting with partners and there was data, there were reports there. I mean, they had more information than I brought with me. Um, and now that team is a team of three that um, is handling all of our partner relations. And so Catherine, I'd love for you to just kind of touch upon what your team does. Yes, thank you. Um, well, I kind of, I hate to keep going back to meeting our advisors where they are, but that is so true from a partnership perspective to whether they are new to the industry or even our experienced advisors who maybe come to us and they already have their preferred partners. Um, I think what they're most surprised about is the diversity and the sophistication in our preferred partner portfolio. That um, while it is a curated list, it's not small and it needs to be diverse. We're 100, almost 115 advisors now. So we need to continue to grow and give them options for each of their different businesses, but also for their different clients and be able to meet those clients where they are. Um, and I think they're also often surprised to be a part of that process. You know, these are not decisions that come from the top. They are our eyes and ears on the ground. They work with these partners and their clients every day. They know what's working. They know what's not working. Um, and so we rely on them to let us know the type of partner we need to have. Um, and I think making them a part of that conversation is really important to helping them buy in and continually grow this portfolio so that, again, they are given the tools they need to really grow and um, 
to be able to offer their clients many different services. Um, we obviously also know that it's not enough anymore just to have a great partner portfolio, but we've got to all, like, always be innovating how we get them that information. They are as everyone has said, super busy, they're traveling all the time. And so um, we use COVID to develop a gorgeous web-based database called Inside Brownell, um, which grows every single day. We keep finding things that we need to add to it. I don't think will ever be done, but it started as a partner database. Um, and because it's web-based, they can get to it from anywhere. And so again, whether it's that new advisor who needs the destination training and everything else to speak confidently to their client before that initial discover call or if it's that seasoned advisor that says hey I, i'm kind of stuck on this I, i've always used this partner but this feels a little different i need something else it gives them the tools to make those decisions really quickly and also frees them up to not be having all the boring conversations about how do you accept payment? How do you do your proposals? You know, all of that that slows us down and it frees them up to really be growing and servicing their clients. So it's been hugely successful. And like I said, I don't think we'll ever be done with it, but um, it's a really important tool for us. Well, that is fantastic. We're getting lots of great comments in too. So if, but if people listening in have some questions, um, for the Brownell team, we'll be doing some Q&A at the end. So please feel free to pop those in the comments um, and we'll we'll take a look at those. But one of the things, ladies, that I have always known Brownell for, this is why this is exciting. I've been learning so much um, the earlier part of this program. But I know you for your mentoring program because it's such an in-depth program and you only accept so many advisors into it. So maybe we can chat a little bit about that. I would love to. Um, and I will share the mic too, so everybody's not sick of me. Um, but um, so yes, I, th I think I want to start with one thing that might be a bit of a myth buster out there, and that is that Brownell is very exclusive, and um, we don't love that because you know we don't we don't want to make it seem that we're not um, available for for all kinds of different people who want to come in and grow all kinds of different businesses. We are very intentional. We speak with so many people. We review business plans with the entire objective of, we wanna understand the business that you wanna build to ensure that we're the people to get you there. And so through that process, you know, it, it's helping people identify their needs to ensure that they find the right fit. Post agency reviews is the number one thing that we say to people when we first get a call is, have, have you checked it out? Are you sure you know what else is out there? Um, because it's really, really important. So um, that that process of, of inviting, of, of having people come in and join us is really a mutual conversation that we're having with the candidates that are interested, both for mentoring and for existing advisors who come in. So a really big, important part, obviously, of the mentoring program is the training. And so for that, Margaret, I'd love to turn it over to you to talk a bit about what it is that we do with these mentees. Yeah, so I'd love to talk a little bit more. Um, I know it's part of what we're known for, but one thing that I think is really cool, I actually joined the team um, a little over a year ago, and I've been blown away by how much goes into the training. It is not a thin program. It, there's so much investment in time and from all of the ladies that are on this call, as well as our whole support staff and our partners. It's, it's really amazing. And it's composed of um, it, the year-long training that we go through before advisors graduate into the rest of the hosting program. Uh, we combine small sessions with partners, which so just the class that comes in, uh, which is usually quite small, intentionally so, so they get a lot of one-on-one -on -one time. Um, we do small sessions with partners, think tanks with each other and with our team that's on the inside, um, the, the heart of the house, and then in-depth discussions with the most successful advisors that are in the business in Brownell. So we bring them in, uh, our mentees can ask them any question. It totally runs the gamut. You know, how do you manage your day? What's your craziest client story? How do you deal with people that are trying to find out budget? You don't know how to talk about it. Um, so that is really special and it's tons of one-on-one -on -one time. It's not, you know, pre-canned videos. It's really uh, innovative. And every time that, that we look at it again for the next class, when we do two a year, we reassess everything that's in it. And we say, is this still relevant? 
Is this still helpful? Is this the top of the game? And that's been really fun for me and really cool to see how it affects our mentees that come in. And it means that they leave at the end of that first year, uh, they walk out of the mentoring program with all of the keys to success that they need. Um, and that does look different for everybody. I know we, we've talked about meeting advisors where they are and we meet our mentees there too. Um, you know, everybody kind of struggles with something different. They all come from different backgrounds. Um, they've been successful in whatever field it was, but now they come and maybe they don't know anything about accounting. And they're like, what do I do? How do I keep track of my ROI? You know, how do I increase my ROI? And that's where we bring in Tony. Um, maybe for some of them, they really need to know more about sales. And I've seen Carrie and Tony both spend a ton of time with some of our advisors. We have one that's a reformed accountant. And she is not as comfortable with the sales language, but she knows so much about destination. She's comfortable with her books. So they spend a ton of time with her there. And that is really valuable. Um, and it means that you can kind of come from whatever background and we'll, we will figure out a plan for you. Uh, I do, <laughs> we touched on it earlier and Gabby was talking about it, but a huge part of what most people struggle with, especially at the beginning, when they're trying to find their voice, trying to figure out you know, what does it mean to start in the travel industry is marketing. So I can kick it over to Gabby to talk about kind of helping people build it from the ground up. Yeah, Margaret, and thank you so much. I mean, all your points were so valid and so true to what we do. Um, and I want to take that back to marketing and say that it is very challenging, especially from the ground up. And that's the point that I re reiterated before. Um, it's exciting though, and it's something that should be looked as looked at as fun, and we have a lot of fun with it. Um, our team has gotten a vast amount of inquiries, everything from, do you like my logo? Um, what do you think about it? Do you like it in blue or pink? Um, to, I want to do a full-blown campaign. I want to announce my business. I want to do it strong, and I want to do it in a big way. Um, and we really ride you on that wave. We really ride that wave with you, and we're there with you as you go. Um, so as I'm talking about building your brand, um, we also build marketing plans and more. Um, but that's even before they get to the Brownell headquarters. So really, we're really working with getting your foot in the door as soon as possible and as quickly as possible, but also doing it in a way where you feel confident that your brand positioning is strong. Um, and we do this through social, through email, but they also have um, website exposure through the Brownell website via their own dedicated microsite um, when they're ready to get up and running. And this gives them exposure um, right off the bat and is something that we're really proud of and, and we think we do well. Um, but so as they're building the brand, they're also learning about the business. So I want to kick it back over um, to AC to talk more about support and the day to day things that kind of pair with their marketing. Yes. So like Margaret alluded to, the mentees come to um, Birmingham for one week of very intensive training and they often leave with glazy, a little tired, ready for a little break to start fresh on Monday. So our support teams are there to answer all the questions that come when they go home. We um, were really kind of the first line of defense for everything process related. So getting those client profiles built, figuring out the flow of when to invoice something or when to just set the flow of how they're going to run their business. Um, and one thing that I love about our team and our community as a whole, not to be a little bit of a cheese ball, but I guess it can fit in great on Valentine's Day, is we do really care about our advisors as people. And we want to know you know, when their children are having a birthday or when they get married or um, so when these new mentees come in, it's just fun to add to the community and get to know them personally and help them launch their business. Um, it's exciting. And I think Catherine the partners kind of round that rounds out that whole process, right? Yeah, I was going to say, I mean, we've talked a lot about the tools we give them, but I would say my favorite part, the most rewarding part of my job, and I think speaking for the whole partner team is working through advisor, client, partner issues. Um, having been on the advisor side, they're often shocked that 95% of the problems they are going through, I have been through myself and lived to tell about it. Um, you know, I've 
absolutely almost had a client get on an airplane without a visa. Um, I've booked the wrong city on a ticket. I've done it. And um, so I think it's one thing to walk side by side with them, but it's kind of another to say I'm walking through it with you because I've been there and here I am. It's going to be okay. Maybe this is what worked for me, but let's see what works for you. And that's especially fun. We do that for all of our advisors. Um, but it's especially fun for our mentees because they, you know, they feel like they're messing up all the time. You know, it's such a barrier to entry. And if we can just kind of stand by their side and say, hey, it's going to be okay. We've been there. Um, they really, really appreciate that. And they can, again, focus on their clients, focus on other things and not be taken down this rabbit hole of despair, if you will, when something like that happens. Um, but I mean, I guess ultimately for me and something that was important for me as an advisor was this brain trust that people have mentioned. Um, and that comes into play with our partners, too, because we've talked about how serious we are about adding people to our community and our training and how important our core values are. And because the partners know that about our Brownell team, they are lined up at the door to work with our advisors. I mean, I literally have partners just wait, how can I work with your people? They are the best. They are, they know their clients. They are so well-trained. They are true entrepreneurs and their team, their team members want to work with them. And again, just having as an advisor having that brand behind me when i started to where when it was just me and no one knew my brand i had that backing of who this brain trust was and who this community was 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 super important to me and i see it every day in our partnerships and i think it really does help them to build their sales and to grow so it's been incredibly fun to be on the the dark side as we call it <laughs> <laughs> well that's fantastic one of the things like i, I keep hearing reiterated through this is it's just such a white glove service that you're offering advisors, which is something that makes you very, very unique. So with that, because you offer so much, what are you planning to do in the future to like improve and grow as a host agency if you're wanting to grow your numbers? That is something that we are aware of every day. Um, so starting, if I can give you another first, uh, is the uh, IC Advisory Board. Um, and it was named the IC Advisory Board because at that time we had in-house advisors as well. So I think we need to do some rebranding there um, from it being the IC Advisory Board. But that was established eight years ago with the intention of having our ICs, who are our clients, I mean, they are our family, but they are also our clients. They choose to be here and they can choose not to be here. And so it's, it's our job to keep them engaged, to keep them successful, to keep them having fun. Um, and so with the establishment of the IC Advisory Board, it was a way that the advisors voted on their colleagues of who they wanted on this board. And there's an equal number of advisors to Brownell team that are on the board. And currently we have, it's a, it's a ratio of five to five, so 10. And these five advisors have a year that they spend term on the board. And we have a regular Slack channel going with them of everything going on. They are our first place that when we have this new idea, we, we share it with them and they help us tweak it to speak the advisor speak or to think of something that we thought we knew and we looked around the corner and we didn't. And then it's also for a way for them to bring back information to us. So um, that dialogue has helped us continue to evolve the program as far as what do they need? Because listen, their businesses are changing every year also. So something that we thought was a great idea pre-COVID could be completely irrelevant now. And so how are we staying with it? And the only way that we're gonna get that is from hearing from our advisors. And so Tony, share a little bit more about how we fill that in. Yeah, sure. So we send out an annual survey to the entire advisor community and we ask them about their pain points, what help is needed, like what services they use most. Um, and um, once a year, we bring the ICAB to Birmingham, our, our headquarters, um, for an in-person meeting and we literally go through that survey point by point. Um, and we use all of that feedback um, from that meeting to craft the strategy for the following year. Um, but the ICAB is also like involved throughout the year, letting us know about like advisor issues. Um, and they um, 
they really have like direct input on where we focus. It's it's a true, true collaboration of uh, in the group. And so um, they they will reach out to leadership if they need to, like if they have something to say. They it's it's very collaborative and it's very comforting. And I think the whole community loves that they have um, they have uh, colleagues and that they can feel comfortable t talking to, and then they can come back to us if they want to or. Sometimes they can come directly to us. It just depends, but it's they're, they're wonderful. It is a great, it's a great thing. And it's a lot about the, um, that's a lot about the how and how we do it. I would say if you ask me to say one thing that that is our intention that we're very, very focused on is technology. And I think that is something that is a, a signal across the industry. It's something that the travel industry was never really known for was technology. Um, and so it is it's something that's very, very, very important. And we probably are overly due diligent in the research that we do, but we only want to have to roll out something once to our advisors. We want it to be the most cost-effective thing for advisors. So um, I would say our number one focus right now is technology. That's fantastic. Well, we have some questions coming here. Are you guys okay oh. if we... Perfect. All right. So we have one from Kasana, and I, I'm not sure, but Gabby, you might be the best one to answer this. So they're wondering, do you have individual agent websites that are easy to set up? Yeah. Um, thanks, Steph. So we do have individual websites for advisors. These are called microsites, and we have a brand new Brownell website. Um, so these live within that website, and we have an easy search feature. Um, you can just search up your name, and then there's your your microsite. One thing that's really cool about the microsites is that they're fully customizable. Um, you can include testimonials from clients. You can include photos from your most recent trip, your your Instagram feed, um, things that really make it you and show your personal brand. Mm -hmm. That's fantastic. Now, and just a question, this because I know on our profiles we have where there's a link to there can be a link to microsites. Do you happen to know if that's up on your profile? We'll, we'll um, look into it afterwards, everyone. It probably falls on me. I think the profile falls under me. Carrie! So. <laughs> I, I don't know. Um, I, I, just to piggyback on that, so Brownell obviously spends a lot of time and resources on the SEO of driving traffic to our website. And so by having those microsites, you're benefiting from that. Um, there's a lot of leads that come in that way. And so, you know, our website is speaking both to the consumer and to the travel advisor. I will say though, we absolutely recommend that every advisor has their own websites. Um, and so that microsite clicks and links through to the advisor's individual website of their own. So mm -hmm. our job is to catch all we can and just continue to send it to our advisors. That's perfect. Well, we've got a couple more in, and I'm not sure um, who's going to be best for this one. This is from Carrie Luster, and Carrie is wondering, does the entry into Brownell look different for a new advisor versus an experienced one? Yes, absolutely. So our mentoring program is for those who are new to the industry. Um, that's what we say. I will tell you, we've had several successful graduates of the mentoring program who did work at other agencies. Um, but maybe just didn't um, find that right help and guidance and leadership into launching the business. Maybe there was help on this is how you book travel and these are the things that you know, but getting that foundation of a business, they were missing that aspect. So, so they've come to us. And then for existing advisors, we do have a minimum threshold of revenue and the only reason why we say that, and it's, it's, it's 50,000 in revenue, $500,000 in sales. And the reason why we say that is because that's truly that threshold that somebody gets to when they say, okay, I get the gist of the business. Now I need to come in and I want to excel. I want to learn. I want to change. I want to grow. I want to expand. I want to diversify. But it isn't until they're at that half a million dollar mark that they get the lingo. You know, what is an FIT? Um, what is the GDS? What is HAR? Whatever that is um, for them to have that minimum part so that we can say, okay, now we're going to take it to that next level. And just a question on that, because I know for a lot of consortia, they have it where it needs to be with preferred suppliers. Does yours half a million in sales need to be with preferreds or any we, vendor? Um, we say luxury 
partners, which is weird because what does that even mean anymore? But what we're trying to get at with that is to ensure that the partners that they're already working with are the partners that we're working with. So for mm -hmm. example, we don't have a relationship with Airbnb. Um, yeah. you know, maybe VRBO because of classifications, but like there, there is some travel that just, we don't have the relationships with that wouldn't necessarily make sense. Again, if we're looking at your business and what do you need to be successful, we want to tell you the tools that we have to do that. And if your business is built upon some of those things that we don't have relationships, then it may not work. So until we find a better word for luxury, that's what we say. I like how you went all meta. What is luxury anyhow? That's a show, Steph. I know that's gonna be that's gonna be when we go on for another Valentine's Day thing. We're gonna get really okay. deep, everyone. <laughs> so we have another question. Um, this one came in from Lisa Stevens. And what qualifies a advisor as experienced by Brownell standards? Is that the half a million dollars in sales? Yes, yes. And Margaret, is there anything more you wanted to add to that or Tony? I mean, I think if you're coming from the industry, but not necessarily a business owner yet, um, but you're at you you have a book of business that equates to at least fifty thousand dollars. We 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 can help you build your business, even if you're not coming from from it's, as your own business. Um, but I I also think you know what what it's not a qualification, but somebody who's hungry to grow their business or current business and wants to take advantage of all the things that we offer and is looking for that kind of support to grow. That's like the sweet spot of who the perfect, you know, who is perfect for somebody who's a luxury advisor, um, owns their own business is maybe at 50, could be more, but wants to get to that next level. And just a, a statistic, um, those who have come from other agencies, um, usually that first year have about a 60% growth and do get, I know it's kind of frustrating that tipping point of a hundred thousand in revenue and we, we do help you get there. So it's not like we're looking for somebody that's, you know, at a 200,000 in revenue and you must do that. No, we're looking for people who are hungry to grow and hungry to take advantage of what we have to offer. Yeah. I, think just I, to okay. I was going to say to piggyback on that. Um, I, so we've talked briefly about our values and one of them is graciousness. And that is something we really look for um, when you're thinking about, you know, who am I? What kind of, you know, company do I want to join? What kind of agency do I want to be a part of? Uh, that's something that's really important to us. In addition to your sales, is, um, you know, that you treat everyone graciously. That we assume the best in our partners, and we hope that they assume the best in us and in our clients as well. So that's how we approach all of each other. And hopefully, you've seen that in this call as well. Um, but that's something that's really important to us. And I would say, if you think you're close to that number or you're not quite sure, don't discount yourself because you haven't quite reached that mark. I would say, start a conversation with us and um, Carrie and Tony can help figure out if we are the right match for you. And, and I would say too, that $200,000 in revenue person, we, we please come as well. You know, it isn't just for the 50,000. We have um, two of our most recent people that joined us during the pandemic were, you know, at at 1.5 ish um, million in sales for both of them, and have been able to grow. I think, you know, maybe something that someone isn't mentioning is is how our compensation structure is, and we are entirely based on splits. Um, where we because our whole theory is that we're 100 percent in with you, and so by, by instead of doing a monthly fee, by doing a split. We're, we're investing in you. And so the better you do, the better that we do. And um, that's just kind of how we are. Everybody is all in. You put in what you take out and it seems to work for the success of the entire community. So you, you all spoke a little bit about the experienced advisor that would be a good fit for you. So that person looking to help someone that can help them take them to the next level. But for the the new advisors, so for these mentees, who would you say is a really good fit? Like what are the characteristics or what are you looking for there? Um, I think probably the, the number one thing is someone who's interested in learning. 
Um, we, we want somebody who's confident. You've got to be confident, right? If you're thinking that I'm going to go out and I'm going to put my name and hang that shingle and, and start and launch this whole new business, you need to have somebody who's confident. But you also want to have someone who is wanting to learn who, you know, when Catherine was saying about sending somebody on an airplane with a visa, we all make mistakes and that's okay. And so someone who's going to be able to put themselves out there, who is probably going to make a mistake. I was just talking to actually one of our mentees. We had breakfast together in Raleigh last week. And um, she said, you guys tell us this a million times. And I still did it. And I learned my lesson. And we said, that's okay. You know, we're going to tell you what these things are, but until you do it, it's really not going to resonate. And that's okay. No judgment. So I would say um, coachable, interested in learning, um, someone who does have a great desire and interest in travel, someone who does have a good network. Um, you know, it, it's really important. And, and that's just the advice that I would give to somebody is that, you can be well-traveled, you can be the most interested in travel planning, you can be the most organized person on the planet. If you don't have an idea of a good sphere of influence, it's really, really hard. And yes, we do have leads that we give, but the number one thing we encourage people to do is think about who, what does that avatar look like of your client? Who are those 60 people that you know when you call them, they're gonna answer the phone? So that's just something that we really impress upon people is really think about who your network and your circle is. Can I add one more thing? Um, whether you're a mentee or experienced, I think this, um, it, you have some, we, we really want people who want a sense of community and want to partake in our community, want to partake in um, Slack conversations, who want to share some of what they know, but are also happy to get information. Um, and so that, you know, that's important uh, to us. And I, you know, and I'm, you know, that would be, that's important. Mm -hmm. Totally. And I, I posted, or this went up on the screen just a second ago, but Kimberly's comment about you guys being the nicest, most welcoming and supportive group of people was really kind. But I will say, having having chatted with them a little bit before we went live, super, super sweet. They sent these beautiful flowers as the Valentine's Day date. That was and not and we were already invited. <laughs> I, I, well, I was just so happy to have a Valentine's Day because my partner and I never do anything for it. So I was like, well, this is kind of special. But then I don't know if everyone noticed. I feel like it's worth pointing out. Everyone except me, I didn't get the memo, uh, is wearing these Valentine's Day colors. But in, in the like private chat, they're just so sweet with each other and so like positive. It's really cute to see. So I just had to throw my little two cents in there as well. Thank you. Well, I, I do love, I love Lisa. I don't know you, Lisa, but I, I love that you mentioned professionalism. And um, that's something that we really pride ourselves on, that we are authentic. Um, we believe that authenticity is the greatest way of earning trust from your clients, from your colleagues, from anyone that you're speaking to. And so authenticity is so important to us, but so is professionalism. And um, somehow we managed to find that way to let you know that you are still our clients and also let you know how much we care about you and your child's birthday, as AC said. And it, it, that's not so easy to pull off all the time, but um, I do believe that, that Brownell does an amazing job of that. Well, that is fantastic. So I don't see any more questions coming in, but if people are interested in learning more about, about Brownell or if they wanna reach out and chat with you, what's the best way for everyone to go about doing this? Um, I think our website is the best way to get to us, brownelltravel.com. Um, and there's two ways to get in, um, plan a trip, which is a consumer, and if they want to travel, and then join our community. And so if you click into join our community, it's going to take you into all about the hosting program. Um, and then there are, um, both from the mentoring perspective and the hosting perspective, there are inquiry forms that you can just drop us a note and say um, if you're interested in learning more. But we've worked really, really hard, Gabby will attest to this, to put as much information on the website as we can, because we know everybody's doing a lot of research. And, and there's so much information out there. So there's a lot you can learn on your own too. Definitely, definitely. Well, I put the link to the hosting website in the comments if anyone is interested. And then do any of you ladies have any closing remarks or thoughts or things you want to touch on that maybe we didn't talk about during the during the webinar so far? 
Well, excellent. Well, thank you everyone for joining us this afternoon. This, this is recorded, so you can always come back to this link. We'll be emailing out if you've registered. Um, we'll be emailing out a link to it. If you haven't registered yet, you can go to hostagencyreviews.com slash events. Uh, and there will be up on the top, you can search for Brownell and it will pull up the event and you can register there to get on the email list to get the copy of the recording. So yeah. thank you, thank you everyone for coming and joining. It was so fun to meet more of the team. It's been awesome. I love, I love doing this. So thank you for being my Valentine's Day and we will see you all soon. Oh wait, no, just kidding. We've got a question that came in. Um, <laughs> Okay, so Monica's currently at her full-time job and has missed a lot of the information in this webinar. Will there be a recording? There sure will, Monica. Just make sure that you're registered. Uh, so go to hostagencyreviews.com. Actually, I'm gonna put that link in the comments so it's easier. Um, if you go to the website and go to the events calendar, there'll be the Brownell listing in there. Make sure you register in there and we'll send out the link to the recording tomorrow. Um, events, perfect. Excellent. Well, thank you again for joining us, everyone. Thank you to everyone that tuned in today. Um, I hope you all have a wonderful Valentine's Day, and we'll talk to you soon. Thank you. Bye. Bye.